A federal judge ruled this week a court cannot invalidate a non-prosecution agreement against Jeffrey Epstein after his death in prison last month. Epstein reached that agreement with prosecutors in 2007 to avoid federal sex trafficking charges. So the judge in Florida said earlier this year those prosecutors violated the law and Epstein's victims could get their day in court. Now the court says Epstein's death has removed the basis for the victim's request. Deborah Blum is an attorney, and she joins us now with more to talk about all this. Good to see you. Good morning. So remind our viewers again about Epstein's deal with prosecutors in 2007 and why the judge says it violated the Crime Victims Act. So that's really simple to answer. In 2007, there were victims, and you know, obviously we know that there are a lot of them, and those victims brought this, their issue to the federal government, to local law enforcement, and the federal government was in the process of investigating and prosecuting. But what happened is, is that they reached a non-prosecution agreement with Epstein in 2007, and then in February, January, February 2008, the federal government wrote to those crime victims, their attorneys, and said, we're still investigating, and didn't disclose that they had reached this non-prosecution agreement. And then in 2000, later on in 2008, he took the state plea deal, which was very unorthodox, because when he was in prison, he was allowed to leave six days out of the seven days of the week, which as a criminal defense attorney, my clients would dream to have mm -hmm. a deal like that. So is this the same agreement that protected any co-conspirators, any sort of blanket? Yes. So what happened in this ruling by federal judge Mara, he said that he's not going to undo the plea deal. It still stands mm -hmm. and it protects the alleged co-conspirators. So their names haven't been disclosed, although we know the names of four of them or more. Mm -hmm. I guess the reporters found out who they were. But what judge Mara said is that they weren't named parties to this action, so they don't have a chance to respond. We know that the uh, U.S. government is still looking into them, mm -hmm. and should they have an indictment against them or an investigation against them, their attorneys would have to argue that the plea deal provided them immunity and that they should not be subject to prosecution. Because some of these alleged co-conspirators could also be involved in the case that's being built here in New York. So that was in Florida, but we don't know if that agreement also protects them from whatever was done in New York. Correct. You know, as a defense attorney, the U.S. government is the U.S. government. So it's my position that if somebody had a non-prosecution agreement that provided that individual with immunity, that that should apply to the entire U.S. government. Mm. But the district attorney's office is saying, sorry, the United States attorney's office is saying that it only applies to Florida. So should there be acts here in New York, which we know that there are, that they could be named as defendants. Mm. All right, so the thing that I keep thinking about throughout this whole sordid uh, tale is the victims. And uh, they are, for lack of a better word, not going to have their day in court, at least with Jeffrey Epstein. Um, what happens to them going forward? Well, they're going to get to have civil cases. Some of them do, I believe, already have civil cases. The judge did make a tremendous ruling in their favor, saying that the U.S. government violated the Crime Victims' Rights Act. Mm -hmm. So what that means is that they should have been informed mm -hmm. of the fact that this plea deal was being offered and that he wasn't going to be subject to federal jurisdiction, that his case was being moved to state court and a much lesser penalty being imposed. Mm -hmm. You know, as a defense attorney, I do know oftentimes that the government or local district attorney's offices don't consult with their victims or they don't actually do what they wish that their result would be. Mm -hmm. So they do their own thing and they kind of go rogue in making a decision without actually considering what the victims wanted. Here, we know that one of the named victims wanted a criminal prosecution. She wasn't interested in the money. She was more interested in seeing him face much harsher consequences. Mm -hmm. So why do they do that? Sorry to interrupt, but yeah. why do they? Why would you do that if you're if you're supposed to? I, I understand that I the think district that's attorney. That's the mystery. Yeah, the district attorney is certainly supposed to weigh a bunch of different factors, including whether or not they can get a conviction. But when you're dealing with the victims and it's not about the money, and they really want to see somebody face a, a, a jury, why would you not even take that into account and well, go rogue, as you say? 
You know, I also I think that the time that this happened, 2007, 2008, is very different than today. You also have very young victims, so I think that the government probably thought that they were doing them a favor in the sense that they weren't going to have to face their accuser. They knew that Jeffrey Epstein would continue to proceed, that he probably would want a trial because he wasn't going to accept harsh consequences. So I don't think that that's what we have to focus our examination on. I think the fact that he was released from jail six out of the seven days of the week and was allegedly continuing to commit these sex acts is what we should look into and find out how that could happen under law enforcement's eye. Mm -hmm. Deborah Blum. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you.